Um, and I think we were all wrapping up our notes. I had one other thing I needed to add. Um, I'm going to give everybody like two more minutes to finish their notes, if that's cool with all, with all y'all. I just need to add one more. All right. How has everybody's weekend been? I watched Good Omens over the weekend, the entire series. It was awesome. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. David Tennant is a gem. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Is that a born to play a demon. It's just like <laughs> literally perfect. Is that Netflix? I think Amazon Prime. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Uh, right. Oh, my gosh. We have so many updates, everybody. All right. I will. All right. Let me know when you're ready. To... Oh, you are recording, Portia. Okay, cool, cool. You hit the button. Awesome. <laughs> Hello, everybody on the internet. Uh, welcome to the Documentation and Developer UX Task Force Weekly Meeting. Today is Monday, the 5th of August, 2019. Um, I am your WASP infested host Jessica and we have lots of people on the call so welcome um, I'll take some notes but um, it doesn't sound like we've got any additional um, agenda items other than the recurring what's up with our um, checking in with our OKRs so I think we should just go ahead and blow on through those if everybody's cool with that yeah yeah I'll take your silence as a yes sweet Okay, uh, Portia, you want to hit the content audit stuff? Sure. Um, I'll share my screen. Give me one moment. And we are going to have a meeting about this next week to dig in into a little more depth, um, which is awesome. So the content audit is um, very close to being finished. In terms of IPFS.io, in terms of uh, docs, um, IPFS.io, that part is finished. And um, let me move this section. Um, so if anyone wants to see it, I'll put in a link in the notes. I have in green the GitHub, so the GitHub uh, parts. So in our documentation, um, many of our notes are linking to the GitHub repos. I'll get into that in one moment. Um, let's see. So I'll just put a link to this. Um, what else I put together is a list of places where we, where we can find IPFS. That's not IPFS.io. So we have um, this.IPFS.io, which is um, where you can download different distributions of um, IPFS. Um, so this is just places where we can find IPFS. So we actually um, know if we actually own the page and we just have like a record of where we can find IPFS around and about um, one source of truth. And um, so here's some of my initial findings. I uh, started this today and I didn't finish it. So I'll be adding more um, this week. Um, the basic concept sections of IPFS is hard to find. Um, and this is a problem because when a person is trying to figure out if they want to um, contribute or if they want to get into a project, um, basic concepts is like a great place for them to figure out if this is a project that they'll be interested in. I have an example of docs that has a good um, basic concept section, which is that protocol. There are other documentations out there that does a really good job of explaining the basics that I'll like add on to this list. Um, number two, we have a lot of um, out of date content and but most of this content um, has GitHub issues so that uh, people can uh, see if the content actually needs to be updated. Um, there are some duplicates in the IPFS uh, documentation. I'm starting on that list now. 
Um, one duplicate is a notes, and a notes is a place where uh, people are able to make suggestions on future features for IPFS. Uh, I'm not sure if it should um, end up in a documentation twice. Um, community info is at the bottom of docs.ipfs.io. Um, community info is important, and I wonder if we can create a page that has like all of our community uh, ways that the community can um, help out with the documentation, help out with different features, and figure out how they can, uh, and IRC channels too. Let's see, five, uh, this is a conversation that we're going to have soon. Assist ways for contributors and developers to systematically update docs. While going through this content audit, you could tell that in certain cases, uh, when there's a new feature, um, there was an ad hoc way of adding docs, but I think um, one of the takeaways of the content audit is for us to come up with a clear way for contributors um, to find, to add to the documentation and also for us to have notes on when the documentation was updated. So I think we can use something like Docosaurus for that. Um, those are the initial, um, initial findings of um, the content audit. Are there any questions? I was curious what the green versus red means. Oh, I should have, thank you. The green, green are, I meant to talk about this, green are um, references to GitHub repos. There are several places in docs, um, ipfs.io, like instead of having a regular documentation page, we, um, have a link to the actual GitHub page. And in the future, it would be nice for some of these projects to have their own pages in docs, uh, the IP, ipfs.io. Red is an external link. So there are several external links in docs.ipfs.io and they're color coded red and green. And um, I will have to put that in the spreadsheet so that it's clear what the colors mean. And, and that makes sense. I mean, I think one of the things that you've identified here is that you know, if you look at the original menu structure of um, the docs site, um, you know, I sort of see it as something that we were linking out to as many sources of information as we had available at that point in time, um, just as an effort to get all of that in one place. I think to sort of elaborate on, Por on what Portia said, um, you know, one thing is we start to do a more thorough rework of, of the docs content. Um, is to see what sort of additional scaffolding we might need to be placing around some of this. Like, um, you know, it's you know, absolutely essential to point somebody toward a GitHub repo for a thing that they want to learn more about or implement or install. Um, but where any additional explanatory content might need to live in regards to you know, in regards to that. So um, it's it's nice to see this color coded because it <laughs> sort of gives us an idea of how much stuff we're not like necessarily actually documenting actively, but we're just showing people how to how to get a hold of the stuff themselves, um, which may or may not be ideal. Like great um, but what, for extra docu uh, great candidates for document pa documentation pages, I would say would be like IPFS desktop and IPFS companion. Um, the repo is pretty comprehensive, but for those that have like its own home in a documentation, I think would be helpful. Those are very important projects. And one of the things that uh, we're going to that we want to do for the content audit is to find a very clear pathway for people to create their own documentation. Yeah, and, and one nice thing that you have been doing in the meantime is, is stuff that's just like very, um, that is hot fixable either because it's simple to fix or because it's like a big problem, like a broken link or something of that sort. You've been, um, Porsche has been adding those as GitHub issues, um, and we've been hammering away on fixing those as we go, which is nice to be able to fight at least some of the little tiny fires in the meantime. So um, we're already starting to integrate some stuff. Yeah, Molly. And we've already had new contributors use some of the issues from the content audit as a way to um, dive in into the IPFS um, documentation and as a way for them to like start contributing so yes. a lot of these issues, they're small, but they're um, great first issues and they're a great gateway for people to get more involved in uh, contributing. And we've been really diligent about marking those as help wanted. Um, and that has been attracting eyeballs since we've been started doing that. Molly, did you have your hand? 
Yeah, so I see um, looking through this IPFS.io content audit that it's also including docs.ipfs.io specifically for guides concepts, right? Um, uh, guides concepts is there under, under docs.ipfs.io. So um, everything above blog.ipfs.io is ipfs.io. So this is okay. and doc blog.ipfs.io, docs.ipfs.io are different pages that you can find on ipfs.io. And that's something that I can color code too. Gotcha. So once you get to what is IPFS and guides. It's part of docs.ipfs.io. Okay. And does this also include yet the things like examples and reference and things like that? Because I'm not seeing those. Uh, references, I believe, uh, line 41. Gotcha. So reference doesn't have things like the commands API and other stuff. Um, commands API is under um, like there's different there's HTTP API, there's an IPFS core API. So that should be in here as well. Okay. I think I don't quite understand the format you're using for understanding what's nested under what. I'm wondering if there's like a standard, a canonical, like this is how you read it in order to be able to read this and understand actually how our docs website is organized. Because like, if you look at the tree on the left of the documentation website, that doesn't seem to translate easily into the way that you've translated this content into our content audit. Can, can I suggest maybe that we table this discussion for, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna look maybe through send this. Me material, I think. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go through the um, Porsche's findings in more detail tomorrow. Um, and see what we can, um, you know, see what we can settle on with some, some core findings and go from there. I just am trying to be cognizant of time on this meeting. One quick note before we wrap it up, I was just going to mention, uh, on the community section part, I think we should pull that out of the docs completely. Um, I had a chat with Zach recently about creating a call to action on the end of all of our videos from camp. Um, and essentially using that as a main card to pull people towards like a one page subscribe and get involved with the community. So, um, page itself is not spec'd out yet, but I, I think that's going to be best to live on the website as an isolated thing. So similar to what it is on Filecoin at the moment. Um, so I'll take that on uh, as uh, another task. Okay. Yeah, let's let's talk that through in more detail um, maybe tomorrow so figure out the best way to integrate. Yeah, that. it should be pretty simple. But, um. Okay. Are we comfortable with it only being a half hour for that call? I like, think that's the like, like, go longer. I'd like to blow that out to an hour. Portia, do you mind? Because I think you organize that meeting. Can you blow that out to an hour? Okay. Cool. All right. Um, we don't have anybody's updates on the Docs platform features inventory. I know that we've all been um, scrambling on our respective smaller parts. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot to report here. Um, just because we've all been working very hard on other things, I don't feel like that's blocking us in any way, but does anybody feel otherwise at this point? Yeah, I feel like it's a stage two thing, so we'll continue. Yeah, and we are definitely accumulating um, some of the some of the features just sort of on our own. I know Eric's got those documents that he's been, you, you've got your working documents for accumulating those wish lists. Um, as I went through and groomed the entire Zen Hub board, um, we also ran into a couple of um, issues that people had posted in the past that identify um, some features that, that community members wanted in a, in a wish list. And um, Chris and Eric, you're both aware of those at this point as well. Yeah. So, cool, cool. We've been trying to gather a, a sort of prioritized feature set that will essentially have these are the must-haves that we'll kind of hit that will be at least like-for-like -like experience and then uh, all the additionals because this obviously this is never going to be a, a one a one phase release in terms of upgrades so um, if we can roadmap it all out over the next few weeks then that'll be uh, the best course of action. Do you want to yeah that brings into the sort of tech stack framework side of things do you want to update on that? Sure. Um, I mean, most week, uh, most effort last week was focused on uh, the homepage quiz uh, side of things. So there's not uh, a whole lot to update really from the call on last Monday, uh, which I think you may have missed, Jessica. But um, um, essentially, we uh, I've just been gathering together any scraps of notes that I found from uh, existing issues that are out there, other things that people have contributed, um, and just putting them into the, the overall sort of platform landscape audit that we're putting together. So. 
Um, it's more just a, a kind of gather everything together and then assess it as one big chunk and a bit, a bit later on. So um, Eric and I have been focusing on getting the quiz uh, and homepage upgrades, which has slightly grown since the original brief, um, just because, you know, I pull in the wallpaper and it goes around into every room. Um, so uh, we've trying to try and box that out into sections, whether or not we, uh, we upgrade certain parts of it. So I, should I continue on with that or should we come back to, uh, should we do it in order? Um, Cause it kind of leads on to the front page, front yeah, page go, quiz. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and do that. Um, that might be a handoff to Eric actually to, to show uh, the pieces. Cause I think that hasn't been shown on a call yet. Um, the pieces of the design so um we, yeah so in summary i think um we've basically been focusing on uh, implementing the uh this open issue the uh, do you want to share the screen or shall i i was about to is this to which uh, you're you've got the envision notes yeah excellent <laughs> Yes, uh, and we haven't shared this, or have we? I don't. No, I don't think in this call we kind of went over it. I think it was last Thursday in more detail, and the GUI and browsers call. Yeah. So, in order to, uh, you know, with any if anything you put on a sub page, you're going to lose some folks, right? Because they like to get there, and so uh, we we want to capture as many as possible, uh, as many eyeballs and clicks as possible. In, the, in this quiz, and so we are going to put it right on the home page. Um, and that's not reflected here, but it is in, um, I've updated it in the, in the sketch. Uh, but just one simple call to action then uh, as perhaps get started, and uh, that would be an anchor link. Um, so it's, in this prototype, it takes you to another page, but it would be an anchor link to take you right down to the to the bottom of the page where that panel will be. And these uh, accordions, I'm considering doing the accordions uh, instead of wide, doing them um, two and two. Uh, it's, it, it, I think it that users will grok them better that way. Um, it, expanding them becomes a little bit more interesting because if you're if you've got two and two and you're expanding this one that does, we could do maybe a fancy push down or something. Um, we have someone on the call who's, who is all over that kind of fancy stuff. So yeah, the simple expanding accordions and uh, I, I explain for Molly at this stage. Um, this is good people. a okay. medical thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll hand over. It's fine. I'll take a, um, let me just get my screen up. Do, do, do. Oh, can you unshare the screen, Eric? I can't. No. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, alrighty. Um, let me get the Envision docs up. Okay. So, um, just mainly for the benefit of Molly here, because I think and everyone else will be watching. Um, some of the thinking behind the reasons why we settle on primarily four segments. Uh, it's because we want to categorize the audience into different chunks that we can measure. Um, primarily uh, being the, the brand new people to IPFS or generally the D-Web concepts. You come through like, what is this? What is the whole IPFS thing? And then uh, they learn, learn more about IPFS is essentially the way you want to funnel them in and then give them some options of uh, helpful links and ideas out to that on YouTube. Um, to just give them a uh, flavor for uh, what, they, what they're getting into and what, what they should expect from um, using IPFS. Um, the, the, share, the store and share files is kind of more of a personal level. So we're thinking like if, you, uh, if you're an independent uh, or you maybe a small app developer or something, then maybe you must most likely be looking for this type of option. Um, they manage large amounts of data, trying to funnel people towards more enterprise or maybe commercial applications of things. Um, and then implement uh, my code, which I think they might change the wording of that yet, but basically build an IPFS application uh, will be more of the de developer or dev experience. Um, there's some ideas around like switching these, switching the order of this as well. I've written up some 
more detailed notes here about the, the segments themselves. Um, but it's more that we uh, want to, I'd like to see the funnel of people going through uh, from A to B and then start to work out the priorities of our audience by self-selecting. So uh, I will intend to have um, metrics on all of the pieces and all the clicks out so we can actually see um, overall as we can get people in from the beginning through and all the way to the end that um, what type of what type of content they're actually interested in and where they actually jump off to. Um, and uh, Jessica's added some helpful notes of the section and content that we're actually going to add into this. Uh, so we've got some links out to things. Um, typically, obviously, the, the more commercial side of things and more enterprise will be head towards the cluster angle. And the implementation bit will be more dev UX side of stuff. So implementation on uh, how to use uh, install IPFS through, my, uh, through the command line. Um, and then that leads on to the redefined, which is like a page page B uh, of, of the, the whole flow, which is the install IPFS section. Um, and because of the uh, development we've done on IPFS desktop now, we can actually prioritize that as being the main source of, uh, of installation. So um, if you install IPFS desktop, for most cases, that will install uh, auto-upgrading version of IPFS on your command line that you can use across to develop your application. Um, and that causes, I think that covers most like 90% of the use cases here. And then we're gonna break down all the other implementations. So instead of having this separate section at the top, that's kind of confusing and it's kind of, you have to sort of choose your own way. Um, start to reorder this based on your priorities of which way, which path you came in from. Um, but for now, uh, yeah, it's basically just like giving people some guidance and that's the whole premise of this is like, we want to measure the, the chosen route from the desired path from the homepage all the way through um, and try and get some metrics around that. So we make sure that we can start to be more helpful. Once we have some numbers, then we can further tweak and refine this page, but really we have to start with a, a, a best guess for where we want to guide people and be helpful. Um, and then move on to what, what will be next. Um, and I think we've kind of settled on two primary actions at the, on the homepage, which will be they're getting started and learn more. Um, learn more will be just basically explaining or digging into the, the current explanation content that's on the homepage. Um, and we'll slightly reorder this to make, uh, make the narrative uh, sort of make a bit more sense. Um, and I've started working on this now. Um, we haven't finalized the design yet, but it'll be kind of a tandem effort while we, while we go through it and we can refine that this week. Um, there's some slight issues that I've uncovered with uh, the way the analytics are currently set up because we've got separate uh, single profile for across the website um, and uh, the blog and other parts. So the analytics are slightly skewed. So I've set up a new profile to just uh, support that and make sure that we can get the funnel correct and nice and clean so we can start with a fresh slate and uh, we'll definitely have some um, uh, solid data then to get from there. Um, that's that in a nutshell. Uh, plenty more to do, but <laughs> we're getting somewhere. Are you using our same Google Analytics account for that, or is it you're now using a different one? No, uh, it's the same analytics account. Just created a new uh, tracking profile, so you can see it, it's IPFS IO with www in brackets. Um, for the meantime, it will stick and it will live within there, so you can get access to it. But um, I, you can also set up profiles so that they can include the subdomain if we decide to expand that out across the other um, like uh, CNAME sites like blog or docs in the future. But realistically, and from projects in the past, it's typically best to keep each domain as a separate profile so that you can then um, get the power of actually the reporting tools and the insights. They work better that way. So, so just being mindful of time, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead um, and skip through the persona and the, um, the hiring stuff, the hiring stuff is progressing very well. It's not something to talk about in the call anyway, because it's HR, um, but hit me up if you want more details. Things are, things are progressing pretty well. Um, we made some hot fixes. Those are also progressing, but I want to talk about the proto school stuff. Sure, so a few things in progress here. Um, one is that Diogo just um, opened a PR that will be a bunch of linking from existing Proto School tutorials to IPFS docs, some Wikipedia articles, et cetera. Um, so that's in progress. There's a link there if anyone's interested. That should be wrapped up fairly soon. Um, we have still our, our open one about doing the three buttons on the main IPFS website, ipfs.io. Um, which we just need to kind of incorporate the feedback that we've gotten from that to wrap that one up. But the biggest accomplishment this week is enabling multiple choice uh, lesson types on proto school. 
I put a link there to a live demo we recorded on the Proto School Weekly Call, which obviously everyone is welcome to attend on Thursdays. Um, I can show you now also if you want to, or we can just skip over it for the sake of time. We may be running a little bit low on time, maybe. Um, no problem. Is, yeah. Okay. Any, um, I, I can jump back up to those other items if, um, if nobody else has anything else to chip in on. Yeah, sorry for completely hijacking that. So let's go. Two minutes, right? <laughs> no, that was really great. Um, so just a couple of things. Uh, the personae are basically the personae are coming out of the um, core. You know, the so the the single question quiz. The what do you want to do with IPFS turned into like six key categories, and then like sort of neatly happened to be pretty much exactly our goals. So so I'm starting on those. Um, have some some sort of measurement or comparison parameters that I want to set up. Um, I have a very, very vague working document that I started on on Friday, so I'll be uh, contributing to those in between like trying to get the wasps out of the house and talking to people we might want to hire. Um, the hot fixes, um, this is actually super, super encouraging. I went, I, I spent like a bazillion hours grooming the entire, um, grooming our entire repo, um, assigning labels to things, trying to piece through what we've inherited because there are like I think 86 issues that we inherited um, was able to categorize those in useful ways um, and between that and some of the, the hotfix issues Porsche's identified we were able to knock out a whole bunch of stuff um, things that were you know I think five things that were specifically identified as hotfixes small things some of whom which can, uh, community members contributed to um, but then also um, just with being able to, to groom the repo and get things better categorized um, Somebody actually came over the weekend and, and wrote the beginnings of a GHT explainer. Um, has a bunch of technical questions that I'm, I'm going to have to get solved by someone. Um, so um, if, if any of you have an idea as to who I should point this person to to get their technical questions solved for the GHT explainer, that would be magnificent. But, um, but what it does mean is that you know, all of the grooming that we've been doing has been seeing, um, has definitely been seeing effects with contributors. So awesome, awesome. Shout out for Dirk for appropriating a good person through you that he's, um, he's had his head in DHT land for quite a while. Who, who's that? Dirk. Um, yeah, it's on the JS team, but he, he also came in from an outside contributor. So he had that whole experience of like, I don't really know how this works that I, you know, I'm going to figure it out from an outside perspective. So Perfect. Yes. Perfect. All right. All right. I will, I will try to put them in touch. Cool. Cool. Molly, anything else? I had two real quick questions, which are more like kind of timing um, related, which is one, the quiz looks awesome. When when are we kind of aiming to, to ship that to the front page and start getting feedback on it? And two, um, we mentioned in the last call that like kind of looking to prototype on Docusaurus and the other one whose name I'm forgetting, something else with a doc word in it. Um, and I was curious when, when we're kind of aiming to do like a very, very first round prototype on that. Um. I ASAP for both. Um, no, the 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 main the quiz is mainly this week uh, as effort. I think I want to wrap that up as much as we can. Um, it, there's going to be some collaboration with in terms of like what the sign of sign of a date will be because it's um, I can get a prototype ready and then some design bits to be done. So, but I, I reckon that can be done this week. Uh, in terms of prototypes, um, I would say maybe the week following or the week after that. So I would aim for mid to end August. And those are definitely the tops of everyone's lists. Um, real quick question, um, and um, oh, sorry, Eric, what? Just FYI, I am at a conference Wednesday through Friday this week. Um, I'll be, you know, doing some work there too, but. We'll do as much as we can without you. <laughs> yes. Um, I will find my design hound. Okay, we'll see you. All right, we're going to jump. Um, Portia, do you mind? Can you please um, upload the call? And then who, who recorded last week's call? Because it never got uploaded. Uh, okay, yeah. Portia, if you don't mind doing them both and adding them to the notes, that would be amazing. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. <laughs>